So welcome back. My name is Kieran Mills. I teach Applied Maths in the Academy and I'm teaching projectiles. Question 3 on the uh, Applied Maths paper. I'm in the third lesson of Part A, Section A, dealing with horizontal planes or on level ground. Now today we're going to do a lot of algebra. Everything we've done so far, it's been a bit of algebra but numerical as well. Now I just want to operate with pure algebra. I'm going to prove a number of formulae and they regularly ask you to prove these formulae on the Leaving Cert paper. Now I'm going to prove the formulae for level ground but I'm talking about the same level ground. So I launch it on that ground and it lands at the same level. Whereas previously we had them fired off cliffs where they landed below the point of launch. So the same level is involved. These formulae only apply if you launch it off level ground and it lands at the same level. Once again, what's the origin? That's where we launch 0, 0. Now I want to get the formulae for three important quantities. The time it takes from launch to landing, that's called the time of flight. So I'm going to call capital T the time of flight. The horizontal range, that's the distance from launch to landing along the ground. So we call that the horizontal range or the range. Now, the path it follows is lovely and symmetric. If I put a line down the middle of it, you could fold that half over that half. So it's nice and symmetric. So whatever happens on this side will be repeated on that side. Right in the middle here, you have the maximum height. So I'm going to call capital H the maximum height it reaches. I want a formula for those three quantities. Always write in the coordinates of where it lands. Well, how far does it go out? Sx, well Sx here is that horizontal range. And how far does it go up and down? It lands at the same level, so that's zero. So let me put the information in now. I've launched it with a speed u at an angle alpha to the horizontal. So therefore ux is u cos alpha and ui is u sine alpha. ax and ay, they're always the same aren't they? When we're talking about horizontal planes, ax is zero and ay minus 9.8 but because everything is purely algebraic here I'm going to call it by its letter of G, so it's minus G. Sx, when it lands, is the range OR, and Sy is zero, because it's at the same level. So where will I start? Well, let me start on the right-hand side here. I'm going to apply my equation, S equals UT plus a half AT squared. in the y direction. Sy is zero. Ui, u sine alpha. By t. Be careful how you write that down. Don't just write it down as u sine alpha t because that looks like the entire angle is alpha t where it's not the entire angle. It's sine alpha multiplied by t. So that looks a little bit clearer or maybe wrap that in brackets to be absolutely certain. Plus a half a y. a y is minus g. That's minus a half g. t squared. I'm going to solve that for t and that will give me the time of flight. Now it's a simpler quadratic equation than some of the ones we've seen in lesson one and lesson two because the constant is zero. You could take out a t in common. 
So let me do it the long way first. So 0 is equal to, take a t out of this term here. And I'm left with the u sine alpha. And take a t out of that term that involves the t squared. And I get minus a half g t. Now to solve that e quadratic equation, you'll put that square bracket equal to 0 and solve for t. And you'll put t equal to 0. But t equal to 0 is a kind of a trivial answer. Because I know when it was launched at the beginning, t is equal to 0, then sy was equal to 0. So I know that. So it's a trivial answer. So if you wish, you could divide across by t. I don't particularly like dividing across by variables, but I know that t is equal to 0 is a trivial answer. So the only answer I care about is what's in that square bracket? Put that equal to 0. Put u sine alpha minus a half gt equal to 0. Solve for t. Jump the half gt across. Slide the 2 up and the g down. So I get the time is equal to 2 u sine alpha divided by g. That's the time. And that's a special time here. That time is called the time of flight, so I'm going to call that time capital T. So I can write down that formula. Let me write all the formulae down over here. So the time of flight T is 2u sine alpha divided by g. Now, they actually never ask you to prove the time of flight, but in order to prove the next thing that they do ask, you need the time of flight. You always need the time in these questions. What they will ask you to do is find the range, an expression, a formula for the range. Now, I'm going to go to this side here. The time of flight, of course, is shared between both sections. So, write down my equation for the x side, the usual thing. S equals ut plus a half at squared. And you know that the ax is 0, so you get the simplified formula. Sx is equal to uxt. What's Sx when it lands? That is the range OR. So OR is equal to ux, u cos alpha, by time, which is the time of flight, which I've worked out here, 2u sine alpha divided by g. So let me tidy that up. I'll put that 2 in front. u by u, u squared, cos alpha sine alpha, divided by g. That's a formula for the range. Let me write that down with my list of formulae here. Or is equal to 2u squared cos alpha sine alpha divided by g. Now, sometimes we want that in a slightly different format. I'm going to use a formula from trigonometry. And the formula I'm going to use from trigonometry is the sine of 2a. Instead of the angle being a single angle, the angle is a double angle or a multiple angle. Now in your table book, you have to do this and prove this in maths anyway. I'm not going to prove it here. But in your table book, it tells you that sine 2a can also be written down as 2 sine a by cos a. We're going to use that to change that formula to a slightly different format. Sine 2a is 2 sine a cos a. Well, there's 2, there's cos alpha, there's sine alpha. 
I've got there two sine alpha cos alpha. You know what that is? That's the sine of two alpha. So I can now write down u squared. All that stuff highlighted with the blue underneath it is the same as sine two alpha divided by g. So now I have another way of writing down the range. And I'll write that down as well. You know, when they ask you to prove the range, sometimes they might ask you to go that far. Sometimes you might have to go a bit further uh, using the sine 2a formula. So it's u squared sine 2 alpha divided by g. Now, I'm going to do a couple of things with that. One of the things they ask you about is the maximum range. Let's say I'm firing a missile, like a javelin. Now, I have a certain amount of strength in my arms and shoulders to launch that javelin. So my maximum speed is set. But I can change the angle of launch to try and make it go as far as possible. I mean, obviously, if that angle is too high, it's going to go way up into the air and land pretty close to me. And you know what a javelin, you want it to go as far as possible. If it's too flat, well, it's going to hit the ground too quickly. So there's obviously an optimum angle that will make it go as far as possible to get the maximum range. I want to get something called OR max. Given that my launch speed I can't change, but I can change my angle. There is a bit of trigonometry I talked about. Here's another piece of trigonometry. The maximum value of sine A, the highest value sine A can go to is 1. Can't go any higher than 1. Again, I'm not going to be explaining that to you. I'm just telling you that. That's the sort of thing you do in maths. So if I want to get the maximum range, I want this value of sine to be at its maximum value. Its maximum value is put sine of 2 alpha equal to 1. Well, if that's equal to 1, what's your maximum range? That's 1, so it's u squared over g. So the maximum range or max is u squared divided by g. What angle is that though? Well, go to your calculator and solve for the angle. The angle there is 2 alpha. Get the 2 alpha on its own by getting the inverse sine of 1. Put the inverse sine of 1 into your calculator and you get 90 degrees. 2 alpha is equal to 90 degrees. That means alpha is equal to 90 divided by 2, which is 45 degrees, which is what you might have thought anyway. I can make my javelin go furthest by having the angle of launch at 45 degrees. So our max is achieved at alpha equal to 45 degrees. Now, one more formula to go. And that's the maximum height. Well, we had this in a problem earlier, didn't we? The maximum height is when Vy is equal to zero. It's no longer moving up or down, so its velocity in the y direction has to be zero. I'm going to do my table again. You know that table was done for landing? Now I'm talking about finding the maximum height at that point there. So I'm going to change my table. Let's call it, I don't know, maximum height. Well, the launch speed, that doesn't change. AX and AY don't change. So what changes would be SX and SY. Well, what's SY 
when it's at its maximum height? We call that capital H, don't we? So SY is capital H. Well, you know what would be good to find, like we did before? How long it takes to reach the maximum height. By the way, the whole thing is symmetric. We're going to work it out anyway. We just should see this. Because it's symmetric, the time it takes to reach the maximum height, it'll be exactly half the time of flight. Well, I know at the maximum height, don't I? That Vy is equal to zero. Write down my V equation. V is equal to U plus AT. So Vy equals Uy plus AYT. Vy is zero. Uy, using my table, is U sine alpha. Plus AY minus G times T. Solve that for the time it takes to reach maximum height. GT is equal to U sine alpha. And time is equal to U sine alpha divided by G. Isn't that what I said, by the way? The time of flight, you can see, is 2U sine alpha divided by G. And the time to reach maximum height, which is exactly halfway, is half of that. If you get half of that, the 2 disappears, you get U sine alpha divided by G. Now that I know the time it takes to reach the maximum height, I'm now going to use my SY equation. So S equals UT plus a half AT squared. And I'm going to apply that in the y direction. Well, what's SY? It is capital H, isn't it? UY, U sine alpha. The time it took to reach the maximum height. U sine alpha divided by G. Plus a half AY, that's minus a half G. By T squared. That time there, all squared. Well, I just need to tidy that up now and guess my maximum height. So let's give it a go. U by U, U squared. Sine by sine, sine squared alpha. Divided by G, minus a half. Let's see what happens here. That'll be G squared down there, won't it? And G to G squared, that will give me G on the bottom. Square that, U squared, square that, sine squared alpha. It's a bit like we had in a previous problem, isn't it? I've got two terms. See that term there, U squared, sine squared alpha divided by G? There's one of them, and there's minus a half of the same, the same variable there. So one minus a half is a half. So if I put that together, but you can do whatever way you want. Whatever you feel comfortable with, you do. But I end up getting u squared sine squared alpha divided by 2g. That's my formula for the maximum height. I'm going to write this down here. h is equal to u squared sine squared alpha divided by 2g. Now look, you've got to get very comfortable doing these. You basically start over here, you do your table, and you find an expression for these three things. You want to be able to write down or in two different ways. So get very comfortable in writing down these formulae. 
They only apply when we're dealing with level ground, but you land at the same level as you launch the missile. That's the only place where they work. They're not in the table book. Can I use them in the exam? Yes, you can use them in the exam. Uh, would I have to prove them first before I use them? Yeah, you could really do a really quick proof and then use them to your advantage. So, we have proved our formulae for the time of flight, for the range, two different ways. The maximum range occurs at an angle of 45 degrees and the maximum height. So we've done those proofs. Now, let's do a couple of Leaving Cert questions and see how we'll use them. So, I'm going to Leaving Cert 2013. Three part A. Well, you know what? They're doing exactly, they're asking the question of exactly what we did uh, in the first part of this lesson. So they're saying a particle is projected from a point in horizontal ground. The speed of projection is u meters per second at an angle alpha to the horizontal. The range of the particle is R, and the maximum height reached is R divided by 4 root 3. So they tell me that important piece of information. They tell me the maximum height, which I call H, and that's equal to the range divided by 4 root 3. What are they asking me to do? In part 1, they're asking me to show that R is equal to 2u squared sine alpha cos alpha divided by g. Well, isn't that exactly what we did in our proof? There's the range there. It's exactly the same proof. So that's what they're asking you to do. That's the proof. Second part, they're asking me to find the value of alpha. Notice when I'm doing questions involving these formulae, I'm not going back to first principles. Because first principles is when you draw your table, your x side and your y side. Well, you know, we got these formulae from first principles. So now that we have them, let's use them. They told me here that h was equal to r divided by 4 root 3. Well, we've done a proof for h. Could you remember that? Take it out of your head during the exam. Well, my advice to you would be just do a quick proof of your formulae. So you have H and you have R. You have to do the first part anyway, don't you? Because they're asking you to do that. So it's only a little step extra to go and prove H is U squared sine, al sine squared alpha over 2G. You know, once you practice them, you're going to do them at great speed. So I'm going to use my formula for H, which is u squared sine squared alpha divided by 2g so I replaced h by its formula and that's equal to r there's the formula for r 2u squared sine alpha cos alpha divided by g and it's r divided by 4 root 3 so I'm going to put 4 root 3 on the bottom. So from that, can you get the value of alpha? Well, look, there's just a single term on one side of the equation, a single term on the other, so you can cancel away happily. U squared disappear. What about the numbers here? 2 goes down to 4 twice, and they'll cancel on both sides. The G's will cancel on both sides. You divide both sides by sine alpha, couldn't you? So the sine alpha will cancel here. And I'll be left with a sine alpha here. So a lot of carnage there. Let's see what I'm left with at the end of the day. I'm left with a sine alpha here. And I'm left with a cos alpha over root 3. That's what I'm left with. I want to solve that. Now, one thing I should look out for, another piece of trigonometry. 
You've got two different trig functions there. You've got sine and cos. I'd like just to have one trig function. And a very important result is the tan of alpha is equal to sine alpha divided by cos alpha. So you're always on the lookout for that. Can I get a tan alpha, which is one trig function, from two other trig functions? Well, slide the cos alpha down. That gives me sine alpha over cos alpha, which of course is tan alpha. And that's equal to 1 over root 3. And now solve that for alpha. Alpha is the inverse tan of 1 over root 3. Put that into your calculator and you will get 30 degrees. So alpha is 30 degrees. So you know, it's kind of a different approach now, isn't it? I've proven my formulae from first principles. And what do I mean by first principles? My x and y table. Now that I have them, I can apply them to certain situations like I did there. Let me do one more question on this. I'm going to do 2012 three part A. It says a particle is projected with a speed of 98 meters per second at an angle alpha to the horizontal. The range of the particle is 940.8. Find the two values of alpha. Do I have to go and do my first principles approach? Or can I use these formula here? If you use them, do a quick proof. Quick two or three minute proof. I'm going to need that formula or. Which one will I use here? I'll decide in a minute. So what information do I have? I have the initial speed u is equal to 98 meters per second. The angle is alpha. We don't know that. They're asking me to find it. The range, which is capital R, that's equal to 940.8 meters. Find two values of alpha. There's my two formulae for the range. Sometimes I prefer this one. The reason I prefer that one is because there's only one trig function there. Where here I've got cos alpha and sine alpha. So let me pick the second one. Or is equal to u squared sine 2 alpha divided by g. I'm going to fill the numbers in. I'm going to solve that for alpha. You could slide the g up and the u squared down. So I get or g divided by u squared. That's equal to sine 2 alpha. Put the values in for or g and u squared. So now I have sine 2 alpha is equal to or, which is 940.8 by g 9.8 divided by u squared, which is 98 squared. Put all that into your calculator, the right hand side. And I get 24 25ths. So I get sine 2 alpha is 24 25ths. I want to get the angle. Now the angle is a double angle. Let me wrap it in brackets to make it very clear. The angle is 2 alpha. So if I want to find the angle 2 alpha, 2 alpha is equal to the inverse sine of 24 25ths. Put that into my calculator. Shift, inverse sine, 24 over 25. Let me say, go to two decimal places. So I get 
point seven four degrees. Now, sine is what I call ambiguous. There's always two answers for sine. Now, associated with projectiles, I provided a separate lesson which talks about trigonometry, all the basics of trigonometry. So you can look at those basics where it's explained in more detail. But basically, that's the acute angle. There is an obtuse angle. And the way you get the obtuse angle is you take that angle away from 180. So the 180 minus 73.74 will give me an answer of 106. 0.26 degrees. So the calculator will give you the acute angle, the first angle. The other angle, the calculator doesn't give you. You have to work it out yourself, the obtuse angle, by taking it away from 180. But that trigonometry lesson that I give that's associated with projectiles, that will explain that in more detail. Now, it's not 2 alpha I want, it's alpha I want. So alpha is equal to, get those two answers there, and divide by two. So I get 36.87 degrees, divide that by two, and I get 53.13 degrees. So both those angles will give exactly the same range. The next part of the question. What's the difference between the two times of flight? Let me just do a little sketch of it, just to see what's going on here. Here's my level ground. That's the point where I launch it from. There's two different angles that give me the same range. Um, 36.87, so let's say that's about 36.87. And the other one is 53.13. So let's say that's about 51.13. There are my two angles of launch. And what happens? They end up landing in the same spot. You can see this one here, it's going to go higher, isn't it? Before it lands, whereas this one here is going to be a bit flatter. You can probably tell just by looking at the diagram, can't you? That this one here is going to take longer. So I'll call this here T1, the longer time of flight. I'll call that T2, the shorter time of flight. Well, let me work out those times of flight. Well, we have our formula, don't we? For the time of flight, 2u sine alpha divided by g. T1 is 2u sine alpha divided by g. 2u was 98 meters per second. Sine alpha. The longer time of flight is the bigger angle, 53.13 degrees. Divided by G, which is 9.8. So put that into your calculator, and you're going to get the time of flight, the longer time of flight, which I'm calling T1. So it gives me, what, 15.9999? It's just about 16 seconds. And then in order to work out T2, I've got to do the same thing, am and I? And my only change is that angle is going to be the smaller angle. So it's 2 by 98 by the sine of 36.87 degrees divided by 9.8. So in my calculator, all I'm going to do is press the replay button and change that angle. And 
and I get 12 seconds, almost exactly. And therefore, what's the difference in the two times of flights? It's the longer one, T1, minus the shorter one, T2. It's 16 seconds minus 12 seconds, 4 seconds. Okay? So, a tricky enough lesson. Lots of formulae in there. Uh, you can use those formulae, but if you use them, you should probably solve them very, very quickly. You should be able to produce them on the paper in a couple of minutes and then use them to your advantage. They only work, of course, if you're talking about a situation of level ground, but it's landing at the same level as launch. Okay? So thanks very much.